Hey guys, welcome back to our 10 part series on macro tricks. And in the next five weeks, I'm gonna show you five minute videos, 10 five minute videos of 10 macro tricks that you absolutely have to know. And double check with the manual, it's all you need to know about macros pretty much. So today, welcome to trick number two, user input. Now user input is great because it lets reuse your macros for multiple scenarios and settings and whatnot. But let me just show you what I mean. So right now here is our show file. And as you can see with every macro trick, I'm just going to add a new macro down here. So if you really wanted to just go to the 10th video and then take a look at all. Nope, stay here, subscribe for the love of God and stay up to date with every new fresh video coming up. All right. <laughs> So user input, what is it for and how do you use it? Now first let's enter a command right here. And what I wanna do is I want to set a fixture dimmer level. And I'm just going to enter a static command. So this will set uh, the dimmer level of fixture one at 11. Now what happens when you want to reuse this macro for let's say other fixtures or dimmer levels? Um, in theory, you would have to go back in here and then, I don't know, change this to fixture number five and the dimmer value to 55 or whatever you like it to be at. But this is where user input comes into play. And it works really simply, actually. All you need to do is add these parentheses and then in between them, add the title of the user input box that pops up. So let's say enter mm, fixture or range. So let's just try that out. So now when I hit this macro, I can say I want to now set fixture five and press enter. And you can see it worked. So now what happened, this part right here, so the parentheses with enter fixture or range or replaced by the value that we just inputted. And that's how user input works. You can take a command that you have in your macro and wherever you want to be flexible on which value your macro uses, just enter this user input. Now we can also do that with the uh, value range right here, enter value range, and we can see that it works. Let's say we want to use fixture two and we want to give it the value of 22. Now the cool thing about this, keep in mind that the part that you enter right here will be just directly inserted instead of these parentheses. So what you can also easily do, and this is really cool, you can not only enter a fixed value for the fixture, but you can also enter a command. Let's say, for example, we want to select fixture six through 10. This works perfectly fine. And then the value range, let's enter one through 100. And you can see here, instead of just a single fixture, what you get is the commands that you input it. And that's another great thing about the user input. You can actually enter complete commands in there. And like that, you're really flexible in how you want to make your macros reusable. Now there's a second way of how you can receive or use, utilize rather, user input in macros. And I wanna show you real quickly. So there's a second way and it works by entering a at sign at the end or in the beginning of a macro line. And what will happen is that the executor will wait at this at sign and it's going to wait for you to complete the command sequence and then hit please to execute it. Let's see what that looks like. So now when I hit this user input macro, what will happen is it's going to enter the exact macro line that we had right before the at sign, but it didn't submit it yet. So now we can say, let's say 10. And you can now see that this line is complete. And notice something else. We have the parentheses in here. And as soon as we submit this macro line, 
by hitting please, it's going to pop up and ask us for the value of this part. And there you go. Let's just select all of them. And the same behavior as before, our user input part in the macro line will be replaced by what we just entered. And now we can see that all of our fixtures are at dimmer level 10. And that's the two ways of how you can get user input in your macros in GranMA2. I think this really helps you build versatile and reusable macros. And that's really important because macros help you automate a lot of stuff. They help you work with the console quite a bit and they even get you greater benefit if you're able to reuse your macro for multiple scenarios and use cases. So that was trick number two. Make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications if you like so you can stay up to date on all the new videos coming out. Any questions, leave them down in the comments or at Twitter at a guy named Jonas. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.